around today, um, some of the biggest threats are from failed states. Mm -hmm. um, is that right? Is that what failed states are all about? It's, it's, it's the failure to, to um, sustain some sort of social norms and then embed them in institutions. Is that the best way to understand a failed state? Uh, I think that um, it's, it's, it's complicated because the first states arose uh, really out of tribal societies, societies that were organized on the basis of kinships. And right. you wouldn't say that they're failed, they're, they were just weaker and mm -hmm. the first states could concentrate power in a better way. Oftentimes they were quite tyrannical and they're just w organized for war. Right. But there is a moral purpose that states uh, often uh, ended up filling, which was a kind of role of protecting a, a public interest. Mm -hmm. Because any society uh, is going to be full of powerful people who use their power unjustly. And uh, in many ways, the legitimate role of the state was seen as a protector of the weak mm -hmm. against the strong. Uh, and once that kind of uh, order arises, um, and then it collapses, uh, you then are thrown back into this completely anomic, meaning no norm, you know, there are no prevailing norms, right. uh, a kind of uh, a situation of violence of the sort that we see in Somalia or you know, uh, other uh, countries that have undergone uh, this kind of uh, civil conflict. And you know, that's in nobody's interest uh, uh, you know, to exist in a society like that. So knowing what we know from your book about failed states, uh, you know, we are embarked in nation building mm -hmm. in Iraq and Afghanistan and perhaps other places. Um, is that a, a feasible idea, nation building in, in this way, which is to, to help in, the, in really in state formation? Mm -hmm. um, um, it is feasible and outsiders have helped do this, but uh, one of the reasons that I wrote my book is that I don't think we realize how difficult it is and how many resources it takes and how long a process it is. Uh, so, <coughs> for example, uh, you know, British colonialism in Egypt, uh, I'm sorry, in, in India, um, actually, you know, built some important uh, institutions, the army, the civil service, the bureaucracy. Uh, it united the country uh, with an administrative language, which was, which was English, but it also took 100, uh, 200 years to do. Right. Uh, and I think that in American foreign policy, the bigger problem is that we're in a hurry. Uh, we want to fix things and then get out because taxpayers don't want the burden of financing these endless uh, seeming wars. And mm. so we have an attention span of about four or five years. And under those circumstances, the answer is no, I don't think you can build nations. You can't really uh, create durable institutions uh, if you're not willing to invest uh, more time. And in, in fact, uh, a lot of times, you can actually make things worse if mm -hmm. you're not serious. So for example, in Nicaragua, we intervened in 1927. We mm -hmm. built one modern institution, the, the National Guard. Uh, we left in 1932, and then that National Guard was taken over by the Somoza family and used as a instrument of mm -hmm. dictatorship. And so that was a kind of nation building, but one that really went wrong in a, in a very serious way. Right. So is it uh, malpractice to continue, do you think? I think yeah. it is. I mean, yeah. I, I think that that's why, in yeah. a sense, uh, if you're really not prepared to stick it out, you shouldn't do it in the first place because you, you, know, you should at least do no harm in, in these exercises. Mm -hmm.